one of those strange coincidences. I'd been searching for stuff on eBay, and amongst the things that popped up as things do was the USB incense burner Arabic electric portable Muslim Ramadan Dukhun spray tool. Uh, spray tool. And this is an incense burner. You put little slugs of incense into the end and it sort of wafts the smoke out. Uh, this one came from a seller called KK-318, but to be honest, uh, you'll find them everywhere. Um, USB incense burner, I-N-C-E-N-S-E, and uh, Arabic, or Arabic, should I say, uh, seems to appear quite a lot. But anyway, here is one of them, and it came from Paddy of a company called Yata, a production company. Uh, hi Clive, just to get you started, because he he got this and then it, it worked for a bit and then broke down. Just to get started, the strips unclip, rigid but poor fit. I have loaded with posh Arabian incense. Uh, now he'd taken uh, Ramadan a bit too seriously and he'd really rammed it in. There's quite a lot in there. Uh, taped up to prevent escape, open with care, LED by colour, pretends to show charge then uh, complete but doesn't run. When working, press twice to enable and hold. Should cycle fan uh, every few seconds. <clears throat> I've included manuals as not always obvious. And the manuals, uh, I'm not sure, should I read the one in, in Arabic here? Or should I read the one in British? I think I'll read the one in British because Arabic is one of those languages that I do not speak. Not that I speak that many languages, but it's one of the... It's, it's all hieroglyphics to me. It's uh, quite an unusual script. Uh, also included some bits and bobs from my company for fun, cable wrap, hair, scrim and chocolate. Uh, Paddy. So, uh, right, let's take a look at this. Uh, the things that Paddy sent are a pen. It's a little selection pack here. Um, Velcro wraps. All oh, there's a uh, name Yata. Uh, Yaba, should I say, on them. No, Yata is the correct one. It looks like Yaba, but it's actually Yata. Uh, and little pieces of dark chocolate and bottle openers. Very nice. I shall partake of those later on. Oh, and a pen. A pen that looks suspiciously, like, suspiciously at the end like one of the radiation sticks, but is actually a Yatta pen. Okay, let's get that out of the way at the moment. <clears throat> so, things worthy of note. This thing is the little heating element, and... If I zoom up, you'll see it's got a little spiral heat element, and I probably could trigger this at the moment. Yeah, little wisps of smoke, is it going to glow? Yeah, it is. So it gets hot, right? But here's the thing. In the instructions, it mentions a mesh that goes over that. But the mesh is a piece of metal. And it looks as though it sits right onto that heat element, which doesn't really make sense from a heat element perspective. I'm going to flip this over from the way it was before. That is pressing against the heating element. And that's odd. Maybe it's a slight manufacturing problem. Let's get some of this uh, stuff. It looks like it looks like Mahawana. But let's place this in to there. And they say not to put too much in because if you do, it blocks the vent holes. But right at the moment, I'm thinking it's more of an issue that it's kind of uh, pushing the that thing into the heating element. And then there's this. This is the grill in the front, which has got this metal slug that pushes the incense in, but it's uh, on a springy rubber sort of Y. Right, okay, so I shall place that in. I'll just sort of knock that incense about a bit and clip this on. Righty ho. Now, to show you this going, because it kind of works, might not work, might be famous last words. I shall place this black surface down and I shall... So you click the button and you hold it and there is a fan that goes in little bursts. Oh, there we go. And it heats the incense and then it puffs it out. And every so often it will cut off and it will uh, go into a cooling mode. So it is kind of working. And the place is stinking of incense. I'm not sure if you're supposed to uh, fill it with the other brown resin and then stuff it in your mouth. I suppose it might work with that. I'm not sure uh, I'd be really comfortable trying something like that. Anyway, now we've tried it, let's knock that stuff out. Ugh. And the little metal screen, because that worked a lot better than it was before. It really was playing up before. I wonder if the problem was that shorting out the heating element and causing it to cut out on overload. 
Right, it's time to disassemble this. I do have the explosion containment pie dish to hand in case of terrible things happening. Uh, so there's one side off. Uh, let's get to my spudger. And we'll spudge the other side off. I keep pressing the button. I could put the wee safety interlock up and that stop. Oh no, it doesn't stop you pressing it. No, it doesn't stop you pressing the button. Okay, the safety interlock does not work. So, I wonder where the battery is in this. I would expect the battery to be down the base here. Certainly this area around here gets pretty hot. I keep hitting that button. Oh, I'm not going to be too fresh about this because uh, it's coming to bits. I have no great need for burning incense. Other than maybe joysticks now and then. Oh, this is looking promising-ish. Ish. I say ish in a, a half-assed way because it's not that promising. Get out. You infidel. Ugh. Get out. Ah, it's off. Right. So now let's... Does the top come off? Let's take these screws out at the side because they're just begging to be taken out. They're saying, take me out, big boy. This might not be a good idea, but we'll find out when I've taken them out. Oh, that's kind of, kind of opening. It's uh, strange, these traditions. Uh, one of the uh, people attending the Royal Ember Millis 2 one year, we had, now which which act was it? But uh, It was a Sultan, oh, it's an 18650. Uh, the Sultan or whatever came across and uh, he brought loads of this really expensive incense. And the idea was that before the his act came on, uh, the crew would go out and they'd place these big urns with the incense coming out of them, but it wasn't practical at all because the, it took so long to light them and then they were, the uh, fire department weren't too happy about having smoking stuff under the under the uh, stands. So the circuit board is at the top. Is this going to come off now? Oh, yes, it is. Oh, yes, that's it. Mm -hmm. Is there a wee disconnector for this that I can actually disconnect this little lithium bomb I've got here. Is there anything hidden? Uh, that's that's it coming out. Okay. There's a little cantilevered switch. It's still active. Oh yeah, it's still active. Let's see, I see if it puffs out smoke. Where is the motor? Where is the motor? I thought this was a little air intake. Maybe it is. Is there a tiny motor under there? Let's explore further. Uh, there are some more screws. Uh, let's, what's this little thing for? Oh, that's the motor. That's the motor connector. So theoretically, if I undo that screw, It's a shame the battery doesn't have a connector, but I can guess that's probably because of the sheer amount of current that's involved. I'm already seeing uh, components that uh, give clues as to operation. Oh, there's a little metal pin slides out. Little metal pin slides out. Hold on, let's try and slide that out. Where are my long nose pliers? I should be zoomed down here so you can actually see what I'm doing. Let's see if we can slide this little pin. This little pin comes out like that, releases the golden button. And let's grab that screw before I short something. So I'm seeing, oh, I don't know what I'm seeing here. Oh, there's the motor. It's a, is that a dedicated little fan? That is a little fan, dedicated side port fan, that's tiny. A DC brushless fan, DC 5 volt, made in China. What about this? Does this come apart anymore? Oh yes, yes it does. I'm not sure it's supposed to come apart like this. Let's see if I... Oh, the whole thing slides out the front, I think. And that will give us access. Right, okay. 
you know what happens now. I go and uh, take a picture of the circuit board and then we take a much closer look at this and see what the circuitry is. One moment, please. Reverse engineering done. Let's take a look at the circuitry and I have to say it's a bit more complex than I was expecting. Um, I initially thought that would be the battery control chip. That'll be maybe a boost circuit with this inductor for the fan. That'll be the microcontroller and that'll be the output transistor. And I was almost correct, but not quite. Let's start with this chip here, IP9315. And that is a fully fledged power bank chip, complete with the ability to drive LEDs. It's got the little inductor for stepping the voltage up. It's even got the little, uh, that pin dedicated to this sort of flashlight function where you've got a button that if you press it you can actually bring a light on the power bank it's a typical power bank chip so that's dealing with the battery charging and the regulation of the 5 volt supply which is controlling this chip and it's also powering this cute little fan nice little fan very it's just a scaled down little little thing not very efficient in the sense that the motor inside doesn't really allow good airflow around those blades, but it's just designed to move small quantities of air, even though it does draw a fair amount of current when it does it. Um, so this thing over here, it turns out, is a battery protection chip. It's possibly going to detect over current. I did not find that when I searched at 3520. Unfortunately, most of the things that came up were a uh, Hewlett Packard printer. But the 3520... It's got a sense pin, which has got a 1K resistor going over to the positive rail and then a decoupling capacitor to the negative rail. And that's uh, just to provide a stable sort of glitch-free input so it can monitor the battery voltage. And I'd guess that if the voltage goes too low, this will cut off. And I'd guess that maybe if the current is exceeded, it may have some facility to sense that inside because this thing can switch the full current and it may cut out. It may also have some sort of thermal facility. Um, the current I worked out for this thing, by the way, I applied, uh, I put the bench supply across the heating element and I set it to one amp and measured the voltage locally. And the voltage measured point, uh, uh, 1.6, uh, uh, what was it? 1.6 volts at one amp. Oh no, no, I actually, that was a uh, one volt. I turned it to one volt and saw the current. Either way, it turned out at uh, 0.6 ohms for this uh, heater. And that means this unit runs at a fair amount of power. It runs at five or six amps with, with a fresh charged lithium cell. Um, so the battery protection chip, the boost circuit that provides the five volts, this is the microcontroller and that is a big fat MOSFET that is controlling the output. The battery connections are here. There's the output to the heater. So the positive is connected straight through that. The negative for the heater is switched through this big chunky MOSFET, which is controlled uh, via this 4.7K resistor from the microcontroller. Um, and it switches to negative, but via the protection chip. Um, other things worthy of note, when the device wants to turn the fan on, it's got an A2SHB little mini MOSFET, one of my favourite little uh, transistors from China, because it's just ridiculously high current and so cheap and easy to drive. It's, it's a strange little chip. So it uh, drives that directly from the output pin. Um, these other components around here are pretty much support components for this, uh, for this power bank chip. Um, there is a facility to have a negative temperature coefficient thermistor. There's the other resistors, the potential divider feeding to a pin of the chip so it can monitor the temperature in the case. But in this case, it, it's not got that MOSFET, uh, MOSFET NTC thermistor, that heat sensor. So I'm guessing it's just purely, um, just maybe just using timing just to sort of emulate internally in software, the sort of temperature rise in that thing. The heater is a bit strange because it's a ceramic body with uh, the wires, the, it's a coil with the wires bent down, tacked onto these leads. I don't think these are continuation of the resistance lead. I think these are just general sort of power leads. In. But um, it's wound around a spiral and then just poked down through holes. You can actually jiggle it up and down inside there. And uh, it does touch the metal plate that you get this little mesh that they call call it 
Um, but I put it across, when I had this across the power supply, I placed this in and pushed it down and jiggled it about. And it fluc- the current fluctuated a bit, but it didn't actually fluctuate that much. Um, what else more is there to say about this? Um, not a huge amount. The LEDs, the two LEDs that go through a little light guide in the top of the unit. Uh, I'm trying to work out where the light guide is. Where's the light guide? There's a light guide. There's a light guide there. And uh, those two LEDs have a single common resistor, which is this 150 ohm resistor here. And then those uh, connections for the LED just go down here and tuck underneath and go to the microcontroller. So it's the microcontroller controlling both of those and indicating charge state and operational modes. And that's more or less it. There's the button which just signals again straight to the microcontroller. It's it's quite complex. It seems well designed, but um, it's a strange little thing. It does seem decent quality, which is strange. I was expect it to be much simpler. Um, I've not tested the capacity of the cell. It feels quite heavy. I'm guessing it's going to be fairly decent. I've got a bit of tape over the the negative. I had a bit of tape over the negative. I've just pulled it off. Um, I may do a test on that and see the capacity of this cell and see what it is. I'm guessing it's going to be fairly decent though. Um, probably 2.5, 2.4 ampere, uh, just because it's capable of delivering that sort of high current. And they tend to be the sort of slightly higher uh, current ca- uh, capacity sort of cells. But there we go. That's assuming it is decent quality. It's a strange. It's really got so many bits. I mean, I'll just zoom out here and show you how many bits it's got. It's just the bench is covered in bits. It is quite a complex little thing. But uh, neat. Interesting. Interesting to take apart. So I'd like to say thank you to Paddy for sending that and mention his name, Yatta. Uh, his company name Yatta again, Yatta Co UK. Uh, for it's a production company. I just thought I'd throw that in. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. The place now stinks of resin. That sort of uh, aroma, that uh, pungent um, incense. But there we go. Well worth taking to bits.